We interrupt your browsing to bring you newsflash. Up till now, lazy lip syncers have been taught to move the mouth based on the volume of the voice. But in their hearts, they knew that this was not how the mouth moved to form words, for they had seen the Google image search for lip sync. Amongst it, this page from Preston Blair's 1948 book, Animation. Introducing Rhubarb Lip Sync by Daniel S. Wolf, a command line program that will listen to your voice and output a series of lip sync timings. It was used in the 2017 game Thimbleweed Park by Ron Gilbert. Thimbleweed Park and Rhubarb Lip Sync were linked, and I had to find out how. Also introducing Blender Rhubarb Lip Sync by Scaredy Fish, a Blender add on that means you can turn a sound file into keyframes from the comfort of the Blender GUI, all free and open source. Okay, so uh, first you want to download Rhubarb Lip Sync. Link in the description! <laughs> and you want to unzip the file and remember where you put it. You next want to download the Blender add-on Rhubarb Lip Sync for Blender. Link in the description! And then you want to boot up Blender and install this add-on by going to File menu, user preferences, add-on, install the file, double click the file, tick the tick box And use this to find the rhubarb folder you've created earlier and find the rhubarb exe or whatever the equivalent is for your operating system. Save! I have now imported a person using this method. Link in the description! And if we select the rig and go to post mode, we'll notice a few things. If we go to the Make Human Runtime tab on the left, we'll see that there's actually this Vizemes tab right at the bottom, which we can press, and these look suspiciously like the mouth shapes we were looking at earlier. Some more than others. Also, if we go to the um, Armature buttons, and scroll to the bottom. We'll see that ru ru we see that rhubarb lip sync is basically requesting we put together a pose library before it can do anything. Okay, I'm up for that. Let's create a pose library. Um, yep. So let's do these poses. First of all, I'm going to swap this for the UV image editor, and I'm going to open up this image which you can download. Link in the description. And it's basically this is the shape that rhubarb uses. So A, that's basically a shut shape. So if I go to mm And now I want to select all the bones, all of these things. These bits here are the bits that control the face. We can select one, right click to select as ever, and G to grab around, and it controls the movement of it. So like these ones, and you do also want to include that one that includes that controls the chin and that one that controls the tongue. And I've somehow missed that one right in the middle here. Uh, enter. And now I've selected those and that mouth is as it is. I'm going to create a new pose in the pose library. Add new. Yep. And call it A. So that's A there. And we're now going to go to number B, which is slightly open. In fact, you know what? I think I might just do it like this. Maybe not that one. There. And then C, select. It's uh, the th one thing you might have noticed about these ones is they're a little bit extreme. And then, yeah, create another one called B. It's not really how people normally move their mouths quite as extremely as that. So we do need to kind of tone them down a little bit. As you see, the first four are basically just opening the mouth. Don't worry about that large square being selected as well. That doesn't matter. Of course, that one's G is actually a f sound. And then H here is a U sound.
and then X here is a rest position. And now we can scroll down here and basically put each of these in its correct slot. And then we can load up a sound file. If you've ended up with like way too many files here and you can't make them out there, this button here will isolate the sound files. And if you have the dialogue in a text file, it is recommended that you slot this in here as well. According to Daniel S. Wolf, the creator of Rhubarb Lip Sync, it's always a good idea to specify the dialogue text, even if it's not word for word accurate. The example he gives is the script says, that's all gobbledygook to me, but the voice actor ends up saying, that's just gobbledygook to me. But even so, it's still worth putting that original script file in. The uh, rhubarb will look out for the rather unusual word gobbledygook and find that and enunciate to that. Now I'm going to drag that up there and I'm going to open a video sequence editor and well I've already done it but start, we'll start on frame 100 and we're going to add a sound file which is obviously the same sound file that we were using earlier and if we set this to AV sync we will be, Blender will play with the audio and visual in time with each other. We're starting at frame 100 because Basically, apart from the mouth, we're still using the method shown in this tutorial. Link in the description. So the end frame of there is 1188. So I'm going to go to, well, I'm going to go to 1200 at the end. So it's a little bit longer. I'm going to pop that up and do draw waveform. And I'm going to select that because this is actually a video editor. That black box at the top was to put the video in. So we've got the sound file there. So we can set this starts on frame 100. So we can set this to frame 100. And we can do, press rhubarb lip sync and uh, basically wait for a few minutes and it will have come up with keyframes. Okay, so all these keyframes have popped up here, which is how we know that rhubarb has done its stuff. And we can see that the mouth is automatically moving, which is very nice. Now, one thing to remember with this is uh well rhubarb was used on a pixel art game and pixel art kind of works in the same way as cell in the same way as the face will either be one shape or it will be another it's not like a 3d model that was made out of polygons that move seamlessly between one's face shape and the next and because of this and i'm going to go to the graph editor and press home and I still can't see anything I'm going to press A to unselect all B box select drag the bottom select and press keypad point and there we get this here so now do I really are we really going to be able to see what I'm doing I'm going to drag that there so that this so like right so I'll do it this way we go to interpolation mode constant it will, you see it jumps from one position to the next yeah because that that's that's how it was designed if we you know sometimes that actually works really nicely in cg sometimes it works to impersonate stop motion in cg however not really this time so if we i mean if we go to bezier like it's sort of now it's going to sort of start each mouth shape a little bit early which you know again not necessarily too bad but we can improve on this if so if i go key um blah, 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 easing type ease in yes oh do i have to go Oh, and then I have to go easing by strength and I go with, I don't know, cubic. And you sort of see, you can see how it, on each shape it sort of starts with the shape and then it pops to the next one. So that now, now that will, that should time it quite well. Another thing we can do, and I'm just going to sort of scroll back to everything being on screen. Right. There are certain mouth shapes that your mouth has to shut for. The classics being mm, b and b 
Actually, B and P, the sound actually comes out the moment you open your mouth after holding it shut. But never mind. Uh, this is a limit to how accurate automated lip sync is. And the true secret is that people don't actually stare at somebody's mouth as they talk. They generally do like eye contact or something or maybe like watch their hands as they're gesturing quite a lot. That kind of thing. So if we were to B box select and select all the frames in the m all the shape keys in the middle if they're on zero zero that's like when the mouth is shut generally and then I've compressed control I to inverse the selection and then I'm going to do um, if I press space here and I go smooth smooth keys and it's alt O so if we smooth those and we do that again we'll now get a slightly more smooth mouth movement so that's the rhubarb method of animating the mouth with a realistic 3D person. Animating the rest of the person, making them blink, making their face move and making their body move is just as important as it ever was. You can't ever just skip out on that just because you've got better lip sync. And I'm not going to do an entire tutorial, an entire 20 minute tutorial on that again. So, um, well, here's another. I'm going to be able to use my new jingle once more. Link in the description for another tutorial on lip sync. Basically, the uh, the method for animating the mouth is different, but the rest of it is all the same. I'm sure you can kind of work out how to combine the two together. Thank you. <laughs>